Last year, I quit my corporate data science job to pursue entrepreneurship full time. My plan was to sell data science services as a way to fund the development of a product I could build a business around. While this made a lot of sense on paper, pursuing this path over the last nine months has made me realize this plan was flawed. In this video, I'm gonna share my experience and some key lessons learned in case it is helpful to anyone on a similar journey. And if you're new here, welcome, I'm Shaw. I make videos about data science and entrepreneurship and if you enjoy this content, please consider subscribing. That's a great no-cost way you can support me in all the videos that I make. Right out of grad school, I went to work as a data scientist at Toyota. This was in many ways my dream job and an incredible learning experience for me. However, after about six months in the role, that initial excitement and learning curve began to flatten out, and I slowly began to realize that the role was no longer aligned with my longer-term goal of running my own business. So after about a year in that role, I decided to pass on a senior data scientist promotion and tank my income from over 10K a month down to basically zero. Since I had done some freelance work in grad school and had grown a small audience on YouTube, my plan was to bring these things together and leverage my content to sell consulting services. And to my surprise, it worked. Over the next eight months, I took 36 discovery calls. Of these 36 calls, two of them turned into contracts. And last month, one of these contracts turned into an even bigger opportunity of over $25,000 where I was sitting in a project manager role and not doing any of the coding myself. While it may sound like things were going great, something was off. This was similar to what I felt facing the promotion at Toyota. It was a great opportunity on paper, but something about it didn't feel aligned with my long-term goals. So I made the tough decision to pass that opportunity off to another consultant. Looking back, it's clear that my expectations of consulting didn't match reality. When I started this journey, I saw consulting as an easy way I could make cash while I explored other ventures. However, after pursuing it as my main source of income, as opposed to a side hustle like I did in grad school, it became obvious that running a consulting business wasn't as simple as I expected. Not just because of the technical challenges of building AI projects, but also selling yourself, nurturing leads, working with subcontractors, and the list goes on and on. In fact, most of the work were these non-technical aspects of the job, with the big biggest piece being the sales process. As I've learned, there are many unique challenges in selling AI services, three of which are as follows. One, for most businesses, AI is a nice to have rather than a must have. So a lot of times it's not the client's number one priority. Two, building AI projects requires a lot of experimentation and iteration, which introduces a lot more uncertainty than the traditional software development process and reduces the perceived value of your offer. And three, since these are typically high ticket contracts, they often require multiple touch points with the client before they close. And I found this extra time commitment difficult to manage as a solo operator. Although I was learning a lot, consulting was taking up much more of my time and attention than I had anticipated. So much so that my content output began to slow down and I virtually had no time to work on my own projects, which was supposedly the main goal of all this. This experience led me to take a step back and reminded me of some advice I had received from a successful product entrepreneur about a week after quitting my job. I had asked him if consulting was a good stepping stone to product development, to which he immediately responded, no. The advice he gave was simple. If you want to build a product, then build a product. Looking back, it's kind of funny that it took me nine months to realize what he had told me nine days into this journey. But here's what I didn't fully appreciate. Building a product is hard. Building a consultancy is hard. Building a brand is hard. Entrepreneurship is just hard. The trick, at least in my opinion, is to pursue the hard thing that gets you fired up and that you find fulfilling. And after trying it for nine months, I realized that selling AI projects to clients didn't get me as fired up as some of the other things I was working on. That's why last quarter I removed the discovery call option from my website and passed that first major contract off to another consultant. Although building a consultancy wasn't for me, I still believe it's a great business for those who enjoy it. It also taught me a ton about sales, marketing, and working with customers, which are universally applicable skills in entrepreneurship. If I had to boil it down, here are my four key takeaways from this experience. 
confidence. First is trust is more important than anything else. For me, what differentiated clients from prospects was the belief that I could solve their problem and that I was on their side. Through a lot of trial and error, I eventually landed on the following approach. Be curious, be transparent, and be yourself. More specifically, be curious about the client's problem and where they're coming from. Be transparent about the limits of my skills and knowledge. And to just be myself, not trying to put up a front and pretend to be something that I'm not. The second takeaway was not to skip the discovery. When providing technical services like data science, it's easy to dive headfirst into the coding. The problem with this is that people end up spending a lot of time and energy solving the wrong problem. That's why at the outset of every project, it's critical to put on your project management hat so you can understand the business problem and fully scope a proposed solution. The third takeaway is to find your one sales channel. Although there are countless ways you can get clients, Upwork, Fiverr, cold outreach, LinkedIn, content creation, speaking at conferences, referrals, and the list goes on and on. I and most of the people that I've interacted with in the space have just one main lead source. For me, my main source was my YouTube channel. And my funnel looks something like this. Someone would watch a YouTube video, book a discovery call. After the discovery call, we would do a paid discovery phase where the goal was to get a clear understanding of the client's problem and to scope out the project requirements and goals. Following the paid discovery is building a proof of concept. And then after the POC, building an MVP. The fourth and final takeaway is that it's not real until the money's in your bank account. This is a lesson I had to learn over and over again, and maybe I still haven't learned it. There are many times that I have a great discovery call or multiple calls with prospects, and it seemed like they were ready to move forward, but then days and weeks would go by and I wouldn't hear from them. And so while there's always excitement in sales, I had to adopt this mindset to avoid going on these weekly emotional roller coaster rides. At this point, you might be thinking, Shaw, if you're not selling your data science skills, how are you gonna make money? While contract work has great short-term earning potential, it is not my only revenue source. There are three other ways I've generated revenue these past eight months. This includes revenue from my YouTube channel, my Medium blog, and ad hoc paid consulting calls, which have generated a total of $7,660.38. Although this isn't enough to pay the bills, there's another thing here that's worth taking into consideration. Since quitting my job, my YouTube channel has grown from 2,000 subscribers to 18,000 subscribers. Along with that, my revenue from YouTube went from $100 in the first three months to $1,600 in these past three months. Which brings me to my new plan, post one YouTube video a week. While this might sound like an overly simplistic and also super risky plan, here's my reasoning. One, YouTube is actually working for me. Two, it allows me to focus on one thing. Three, making one video a week gives me a clear quantifiable goal I can use to structure all of my efforts. For instance, here's a list of things that can go into making a YouTube video. Reading papers, writing medium articles, writing code examples, talking to people, conducting interviews, building projects, workshopping, content ideas on other social media platforms, and probably a lot more. Now here's a list of things that can result from making a YouTube video. Learning a new skill or topic, getting more paid calls, more speaking gigs, more inbound leads, more people joining the data entrepreneurs, more content from my other channels, and growing my audience. Nevertheless, committing to one thing is scary, especially something unpredictable like YouTube. However, the longer I spend on this journey, the more I realize that commitment and focus are necessary ingredients for success because this is the only way that every ounce of your effort can go in the same direction and to quote a fellow entrepreneur and friend Michael Lynn if you're doing less and less that means you're going in the right direction and indeed this feels like the right direction at least for now nine months into this entrepreneurship journey I have three reflections that are top of mind the first is I could have a very successful consulting business and I could have a very successful YouTube channel but I can't have both. I have to pick one. And personally, I just like making YouTube videos more. The second is a subtle mindset shift, which is instead of asking yourself, will this thing work? Ask yourself, how could I make this thing work? It may seem like a subtle shift, but this is the mindset that I'm adopting this quarter in making YouTube my main focus. And the third and final mindset is to trust yourself. Trust that you'll figure it out. Trust that if you're backed into a corner, your survival instinct will kick in and you will solve the problem. Thanks for watching to the end. I hope 
hope you got some value out of this. If you have any specific questions about my journey, feel free to drop them in the comment section below. And as always, thank you so much for your time and thanks for watching.